Welcome to the Big Success Show. Today, how Ray Kroc made a fortune from McDonald's. Brought to you by FinancialFreedomTool.com. Plenty of money for life. Big Success with the Professor and Mary Lynn. I find this fascinating, Mary Lynn. Ray Kroc, we all probably, most people know the name. And if you don't, you know McDonald's. I don't know. Most people have eaten the French fries. Exactly. Or had so, the quarter pounder with cheese. What I think a lot of people don't know is that he made his fortune on someone else's idea. What? Yeah, isn't that interesting? And, and even then, he had to overcome many, many obstacles over a number of years in order to reach big success. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, I'm George Kruger, a.k.a. The Professor. And I'm Mary Lynn. So Ray Kroc is one of the most legendary entrepreneurs in history. Legendary. <laughs> legendary. He built McDonald's into one of the world's most iconic brands. I mean, who doesn't know the Golden Arches? Exactly. But his destiny was anything but certain, as you're about to see, he was no young superstar. May we just say that? I mean, <laughs> and, and honestly, I feel like this story is just so helpful to entrepreneurs uh, and people who are who think like entrepreneurs because sometimes it seems like success is not within your grasp. Exactly, but you just have to keep going. And and Ray Kroc is the living embodiment. Um, I guess he's not living anymore, but the embodiment <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> of of the whole thing is not get rich quick success still usually comes slowly. Now, as a child, Ray Kroc was so prone to daydreaming that his parents nicknamed him Danny Dreamer. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because a lot of times daydreaming is associated with being somebody who's just not focused. Yes. And so or there's always a been a negative head. connotation with Absolutely. being a dreamer. Yes. And, and I mean, I'm a dreamer. I, I admit yeah. it. And sometimes when I have a lot of stress, one of my greatest stress relievers is to just kind of dream a little bit and get me back focused on the vision. Is that right? what you're doing over there? Because I always think you're sleeping, <laughs> like actually sleeping. Yes. You're actually dreaming. I am dreaming. Yes. Yeah. So, so I understand this whole daydreamer thing too well. And he started his first business, a lemonade stand, while he was still in grammar school. How about that? I mean, so his first business... He was in grammar school. so And I think you often see entrepreneurial types sometimes show themselves at a pretty young age. Right. But that doesn't always have to be the it case. It doesn't have to be the but case. But in, in his case, it certainly was. Because when he was a freshman in high school, he opened a music store. What were you doing <laughs> when you were a freshman in high school? Huh? Well, well and, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Marilyn. Yeah, well... Uh, he did have to close the music store a few months later, but I mean, uh, yes. wow, the fact that he even opened one. Well, and I always encourage my students to get started as soon as possible. The best time to start a business, even if it's a side business, the best time to start it is today. Going back to your freshman year of high school, imagine if you had started your first business then. Well, and here's the good thing about being entrepreneurial at a young age, because he learned the art of the upsell. Mm-hmm. While he was in his teens, working at his uncle's soda fountain. Yeah, and you know, isn't it interesting, Marilyn? I, I was thinking about this as we prepared for this show. How many of the most successful people I know, and you know, in many cases, just I'm, I'm very lucky in that with my class, I get to sit and listen to great stories of success. You have guest speakers, so successful business people come in and speak to your class and tell their story. And what's amazing to me is when you when you listen to really successful people tell their story, they are lifelong learners. And and I don't necessarily mean that to say they've got their head in the book a book all the time, although that's part of it too. But they're watching other people. They're looking at other people. They're learning new new techniques. They're learning new ways of doing things. And Ray Kroc is is once again he's the embodiment of this. He was he was learning how to upsell by working in his uncle's soda fountain. Okay, but you know, smarts learning that doesn't always necessarily come from school because. Ray Kroc dropped out of high school after a sophomore year. Yeah, and the reason I think it's important to say this in here, because back in that time, that was probably not that unusual. But, you know, I think a lot of times I run into people who, and I understand this, because I think I kind of felt the same way before I, you know, I dropped out of college. I went back and got my master's degree. Now mm -hmm. I can teach at the college. And 
I think a lot of people who don't have that formal education sometimes doubt themselves. Well, that would be me. And well, but the reality is, you've got so much world experience, and mm-hmm. I mean, some of the most successful people I know only have a high school degree. And the the thing I'm here to tell you, not you know, if you're a young person, get a college degree. But if you didn't get it, it doesn't mean that you didn't learn skills along the way. You did, and you know more than a college graduate in most cases. Right. Well, I mean, there's the trades route, and that's essentially what I took right. by being in the job, in, in, radio. in my profession yeah. in radio. I took the trades route, yes. and I didn't just learn broadcasting. I learned marketing. I learned sales. I learned um, audio production. I learned like a, a wealth of information. Yes. I learned soft skills, hard skills, managerial skills. Right. So all of that stuff I learned on the job. Um, and I think Marilyn, one of the most attractive things about you is that big giant brain of yours. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're a really smart person. <laughs> well, thank and, you. And I think the point here is think about what you've learned, not, not what degree you've earned. You know, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. the, the learning is what's important. And the learning is what leads to earning. All right. Well, now back to Ray Kroc. Yes. As a young man, he lied about his age so that he could join the Red Cross during World War I. Now. And that's something that we have also read about the young entrepreneurial types or people who tend to have this entrepreneurial mindset. They are they will lie and break rules. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't do it in a terrible way. They don't do it for terrible things. But th- they are willing to bend the rules in order to be able to do what it is they want to do or to get further. Yeah, and we're not saying unethical or unlawful right. or immoral or anything like that. But we're just saying that... Yes, entrepreneurs tend to be rule breakers. And mm. in fact, Mary Lynn, you know, in all my years of entrepreneurship, I've never won a national award, but you've won a national award for being a rule breaker. <laughs> and I broke the rules of the contest <laughs> to win that uh, award. So that's yes, ironic. But. This, it is ironic. So, and, and now the reason we're telling you this about Ray Kroc and breaking the rules and, and, you know, lying about his age is actually he drove an ambulance for the Red Cross, as did another young man by the name of Walt. Disney. Wow, that's just crazy. Those two <laughs> so the two paths. of them, yes, they cross paths. And, and actually, we're, we're going to come back to Walt Disney later in this story. Now, after the war, Ray Kroc became a paper cup salesman by day, and then he played the piano at night. Yes, isn't that interesting? Huh. So, I mean, first of all, you notice the track in sales and, and people with sales skills, you know, it that's doesn't a, matter that's a what good... it is. It could be a soda fountain. It could be music. It yes. could be paper cups. Exactly right. Or it could be McDonald's franchise or right. restaurants, right, as we're, as we're going to learn. But that sales skill is a hugely important skill to have. So if you have that, great. If not, think about partnering with somebody who does. Right. And then the whole piano thing. Right. Isn't that Using interesting? Using his creative talents to be able to... Add some income. And as we've often cited, you know, in the, in the Society of Scientists, the, the Nobel Prize winners are the ones who, you know, most likely are most likely to have a hobby, have a side thing going on that helps their creativity. So here's Ray Kroc fitting right in. Now, as Ray Kroc's journey continued, he was completely wiped out financially after an attempt to sell land in Florida. So yes. he's ventured into real estate and he yeah. lost everything. Yeah. And the thing is, you know what happens when entrepreneurs and successful people do that? They do something else. They just start again, you know, and that's what, that's what he did. So he went back to selling paper cups. Hey. Now here's the thing. He's had all of this failure, right? All of these things have happened to him already. At this time, he's 25 years old. Wow. So the lesson there is also, it's so important And the older I get, the more I realize how important this is to live life with a sense of urgency. Don't sit around thinking about what you're going to do someday if. Mm -hmm. Figure out what can I do right now. And Ray Kroc definitely did that. And 13 years later, he Uh, started a company that sold milkshake machines. Oh, how, how integral milkshake machines are to this entire story, as you're about to learn. But he did struggle to make ends meet for seven years until World War II ended. Now, Ray Kroc was rejected. And here's another one of our favorite parts Mm -hmm. of the story. The concept that became the McDonald's that we know today wasn't even Ray Kroc's idea. How is that? (laughs) Well, the originators were his best customer. 
They were they were they had this of, little of, ha- of the milkshake machine. Exactly, the McDonald's brothers had this little tiny hamburger stand, and as I understand it, pretty much you bought a, you got a hamburger, a cheeseburger, French fries, soda, or a milkshake. That that was the entire menu. Mm-hmm. It was called McDonald's because they were the McDonald's brothers, mm-hmm. and these guys sold more than any other place that Ray Ray Kroc could imagine, and they become his big they became his biggest milkshake machine customer. So now they had a uniquely successful hamburger stand, as yep. you just described, and Ray Kroc approached them with one purpose in mind, to sell more milkshake mixers. <laughs> See, now, now here's where you can have vision or you can have tunnel vision. And at this point in his life, Ray Kroc had tunnel vision. All he was thinking about was selling more milk milkshake machines, more mixers, right? So he suggested that the McDonald's brothers open more restaurants because every restaurant would need a milkshake machine. <laughs> and guess what? what? The unhappiest day of Ray Kroc's life, the, Mc, the McDonald's brothers rejected his pitch. They said they gave him a they big said no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, how all the effort, energy, and expenditures finally came together for Ray Kroc. Right after this word from our sponsor, financialfreedomtool.com. Plenty of money for life. Looking for money to start your business? The Financial Freedom Tool helps you uncover money hidden in your budget so you can start your business sooner than you think. Learn more at financialfreedomtool.com. That's financialfreedomtool.com. Today we're talking about Ray Kroc's story, how he became a legendary entrepreneur. We left off at how he got rejected by the McDonald's brothers, but he did not give up. Now, success came slowly, but Ray Kroc suggested that the McDonald's brothers license him their idea so he could open more restaurants for his milkshake machines himself. Yes. Now, isn't it interesting that when you open your vision up, so so a lot of times, and most of the time, I think this days, we've got so many things hitting us. It's all about bringing your focus down, right? Tightening it up. But he actually now expanded his focus. He expanded wait, his thinking. Wasn't it, I mean, wasn't this still the pitch, the idea that he wanted more restaurants open for his milkshake machines? But now he's figured out he's going to have to run those restaurants. Okay. The McDonald's brothers aren't going to run them. They're not going to do what he wanted to do, which was just, he wanted to just keep selling milkshake machines. Mm-hmm. The McDonald's brothers said no. So now he's figuring out, it's like, okay, well, they're not going to do it. Why don't I do it myself? Why don't I license this idea from them? But it wasn't because he could see the potential of the fast food business. He was still focused, still focused on selling more milkshake machines. Right. So isn't he just that kind of said, is that still I'm tunnel gonna... vision, though? Well, kind of, but at least it's starting to open up a little bit. See? Okay. And, and where you see this, a great, just a historical great example of this was the people who didn't realize they were in the transportation business. They thought they were in the horse and buggy business. Yeah. So they kept inventing horse and buggies when cars were being invented. Well, it's kind of similar in the sense you've got to expand that vision at some point. His vision was starting to expand. So Roy Kroc nearly went bankrupt trying to get the restaurant business going. So the yep. brothers said, yes, you can the go ahead and open up more li- stores. Yeah, the brothers let him license the stores. And along the way... Kroc realized that he needed more money, and this prompted him to franchise his business. Yeah. So, and you understand franchises because you owned a franchise. Well, it's kind of, the best way I've ever heard fran- franchising described is it's kind of like an instant business. Just add capital. Hmm. So you just add capital to the business. The franchisers, work, a good franchisor has worked out all the systems and the processes and the procedures, and you just come in and run the business. And that's what Ray Kroc decided to do. The best way for him to grow his business was to sell franchises. So now you see what he's doing? He's kind of come back. He's got that milkshake machine going, only now he's starting to realize, oh, there's money in these restaurants. Okay. Now, here's the great part. <laughs> Remember old Walt Disney from back in the World War I days, driving ambulances for the Red Cross? Yes. Well, here's the importance of building a network at a year early age. <laughs> because now, Ray Kroc goes to Walt Disney and talks to him and says, Hey, I'd like to put a McDonald's in your amusement park, Disneyland. Which, which was just opening, right? I mean, this is Disneyland brand new. So he pitches that idea... <laughs> 
Get, guess what? <laughs> his good friend, right? His, his his old buddy Walt Disney never responded to his pitch. So just when you think, hey, I've got a great connection, this is a good point for entrepreneurs. Sometimes they just don't pan out, but that's okay because sometimes a, a connection that you didn't think would be um, amazing does pan out. So it's still important. I think the lesson I've learned from this, Marilyn, is it pays to have more than one friend. <laughs> I would say that's a that's a very good point. But I'll stick with one wife. <laughs> you better. <laughs> all right. You know what's good for you. <laughs> all right. So now Ray Kroc overcame all these obstacles. Yes, he did. And he was 52 years old when he started McDonald's. Yeah, and so I want to highlight this just for a second. So 52, okay? Now... I think there's this perception in our society that most entrepreneurs, the people who really make it big with two G's, Mm. there's this perception that they're 20s, in their 20s, in their 30s. And remember, be urgent about life. Start the sooner the better. But, you know, it's never too late. Mm. And that's what Ray Kroc proves is that it's never too late. You know, we're talking 16 years after after he started this milkshake machine business. Boy. He finally starts kind of getting into the business that's actually going to change his life. Uh, that that's some stubbornness right there. It is, but, that's it, exactly but it really right. paid off. And Good after all his work, after all this time, he finally reached the success he dreamed of with McDonald's. Yeah. So seven years from the day he started it, at the age of fifty nine, he bought out the McDonald's brothers for. In today's dollars, twenty-two million dollars. So it, he thought their share was worth wow. twenty-two million. Now, when he passed on, he was worth in today's dollars about one point two five billion. <laughs> much of which has been given away. Wow! Now that's big success. We hope this story inspired you. And for more inspiration, we encourage you to join our newsletter. And you can do that at Big Success. That's big with two G's, success.com. And you've given us a supersized bundle of joy for listening to our show today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Until next time, here's, here's to your, your big, big success. success. Find big success at B-I-G-G-Success.com. 